Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video, I'm showing you how to use my customizable Turuges. Now, these are the small leather straps that hang down from belts, typically seen in ancient Greek and ancient Rome. So, the important thing to note is these are customizable. You don't just add them as you see them here in a big flat block. Instead, you cut them up and you can heat them up and bend them to shape. I've been creating these sets for my own miniatures. You can buy these in sets of five from beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop. And also Patreon supporters get a special discount on the store, which I'll find out about at the end of the video. And I've done three different styles. I've got a rounded style here, which is a bit more like the ancient Greek style. I've got a pointed style, which is much more reminiscent of ancient Rome. And then I've got a slightly more generic square style as well. And you can see the metal studs on the bottom on the round and square sides. And then on the pointed side, they go all the way up the band. Now these are compatible with any sort of 28, 32 millimeter scale models. I myself have been using the rounded style for my primary Space Marines Minotaurs chapter, while the pointed style is much more reminiscent of something like the Ultramarines chapter. So let me run you through a few examples. So this is my Primaris Lieutenant, or Lieutenant if you're American. So this one's a heavily converted up miniature, but you can see the Taruges at the bottom hanging down from his belt. This one's a relatively complicated model because of this extra detail on the right hand side. So I had to carefully shape this band on the right hand side. This one is a sergeant. The way I've been using these Taruges is that I'll be using them to mark all ranked officers. So from sergeants, lieutenants and captains basically. However, there's nothing stopping you from adding it to every model in your army. And you can see here just where I've used a tiny bit of green stuff to help blend it to the top of the belt. For the pointed style, which is a bit more Roman, I've got this guy here. You might recognise him from the store website where I've done a photographic mini tutorial, which I used this guy for. And as you can see, all the layering of those Taruges gives you a really nice sort of dynamic pose that you wouldn't get if it was something just static. For the square start, I used a Hellblaster Sergeant as an example for you. So you can again see how they all layer up really nicely and you can create really dynamic poses with them. So the last model I wanted to show you is just one that I painted up. This is my Minotaur's Inceptor Sergeant. So once the model has been painted up, you can see that the bands look really good and become part of the model. And you can see the studs stand out really nicely on those strips. So moving on to the kind of installation guide, so to speak. So the kit utilizes some interesting properties of resin, which is basically once you heat it up, you can bend it to shape. If you've never used resin before, I've got a couple of handy videos which will be helpful covering a beginner's guide on using resin. Uh, one of which, for example, is that you should always wash your resin with warm soapy water. That's just to help remove the releasing agent that the pieces get covered in as part of the casting process. And if you don't do that, then the paint might not necessarily adhere to the model. If you haven't ever worked with resin before, please check out those videos. I'll put a link in the description and it should appear in the top right hand corner now as well. For this installation guide, you'll need a couple of things before you start. As I just mentioned, you should wash your resin in warm soapy water, first of all. And then once you've done that, you will be at this stage. So you'll need one of your Taruges plus a mini that you're going to work on. This is an Intercessor Sergeant and I've got him with a thunder hammer. This arm is currently just magnetized on. It will allow us to get easy access to the model. Now, depending on which miniature you're using, you might find it best to leave it off the base just so to give you greater access to this area so it's not as fiddly, but I'm quite happy with it using this method. I've also done one that's slightly trickier. So this one's got a pouch, which will be getting in the way of where the Taruges are. So I'll also demonstrate how to solve that issue if something is in the way just there. And as I mentioned before, these should work with any 28 to 32 millimeter scale models not just space marines so there's a few essential tools plus a few that will just help you when you're installing this kit so you need a knife a pair of flat nose pliers might be handy just to help you hold the individual strips likewise a bit of blue tack or self-adhesive putty is quite useful just for picking them up and placing them if it's too fiddly to hold with your fingers. Then you'll need something to help clean up the edges of the strips. So I've got some sanding sticks, 
Likewise, some sandpaper or a file would also do the job. Lastly, you'll need some super glue for gluing the two rouges to your model. You can't use plastic glue because plastic glue doesn't work on resin. And if you have a toothpick, this will just help you have a bit more control about where you put that glue. Later on, you'll also need a hairdryer or a bowl of hot water to heat up your resin. So the great thing about this kit is it's quite customizable to your particular miniature. Now the first thing you want to do is cut this gate bit off just here. However, you can actually customize the length of your tarugas to match your miniature. So for example, this one is very similar to the full length of this set of tarugas. However, for the Greek style ones, I like mine to be a bit shorter than that. You can see here that I've actually cut these down to around about that size. So I keep my length pretty consistent for all of my miniatures. So my infantry, I want this to be eight millimeters in length. So I just need to carefully measure it out and then use this as a guide. And then clip that piece off. So you want to cut that as square as possible. If you don't, you can always just go back in with a knife and do a second cut, or you can just carefully clean it up with a file. And um, either way, you kind of want to go in with a file or some sanding sticks just to clean up that edge. So I use a kind of medium grit to start off with, and then a finer grit just to give it a slightly better finish. Then once you've got those, you just want to carefully run your blade down this groove here which will help you perfectly split these out into individual strips so now we have our five individual strips now what we need to do is just carefully pick them up one at a time and just sand down these edges so they're a bit neater so the best way to do this is to grab a pair of flat nose pliers and you can easily grip it uh, just like this and this way you're not damaging any of the detail so you just want to lightly sand down that edge a few times just to tidy it up so as i mentioned before i'm just going to do this with a medium grit and a fine grit just to give it a nice polish now you don't necessarily have to do this but that's just what i like to do and then once you've done that, you can just flip it around and do the other side. Go in and just adjust that shape if you feel like you need to. So once you've done that, you should have a really nice band that's all cleaned up. Now we just need to repeat to that for the remaining bands. So for the most part, you can skip out that filing down method. I like to do it on all of them just to sort of be on the safe side. But then sometimes you might have an incident where you weren't quite 100% when you split the strips. So you've got a little bit of excess on this side. So that's one of the times when you do want to go in with the file just to tidy that up. So you just want to use a sort of medium file to start off with, just to trim that excess off and you can just merge it around and then go in with your finer file just to tidy it up. There you go, just so you've cleaned up that edge. So once you've tidied up those five strips, you're now all ready to add them to the model. There are a bunch of different layering options that you can do to individually stylize up your tarugas. So with my Minotaurs, I've got a pattern that I like to replicate all the time. So that is the far left of the middle and the far right are all sort of in front of the two strips that are immediately either side of the middle one. So you get a nice bit of depth to your tarugas. With this style, I've actually reversed it. So the two that are adjacent to the middle one are actually in front of the other three. But then to confound things even further, due to the way the leg is positioned, the leftmost strap then goes back over the one that was in front of it. So you can get some nice interesting styles. And lastly, on this one, for example, it doesn't really have much in the way of stacking, pretty much in alignment with each other. 
Another alternative method would be to stack them outside inwards. So the middle one is on top of the two either side and those two are on top of the ones at the very end. So having worked out what method you want to do, you then just need to get your model. And for ease on this guy, I'm just going to take off his arm just so that gives me more access to this area. Now, depending on your kit, you might want to do this stage before you add on the arms or even the base, just to give you the most room. Now, one thing you don't need to do, but you might want to, depending on your layering, is to just trim away at his groin armor, which is quite an amusing concept. You don't need to take off too much, just enough that the tarugas will lie flat against that belt and belt buckle. So to start off with, I always add the two either side of the middle one and I line them up with the edge of the belt buckle. So there'd be one here, one here, and then I can add the other two either side on top along with the middle one. So when you add the glue, you want to just add it to the reverse side. So if we flip this over, so this is the back, you just want to apply it to this very end bit just here. Now we need to be careful at this stage because the glue will set the resin so when it gets heated up any part that's got the glue on it won't be able to bend. So if you get it too far down you'll find that this bit all of a sudden becomes really stiff and won't be able to bend which isn't what you want at this stage but we can use this method later on to fix the style and wave of the Taruja's later on. So I'm just going to apply a bit of glue. You can get away with just carefully applying it straight out of the bottle however I find it's slightly easier to just dab on a little bit to a toothpick which gives you a little bit more fine control. That's the front, just flip it round to the back just carefully apply it to the very end, just there. And then I want to place it around. And this is where the reverse side of the toothpick can come in handy. Where it just allows me to shuffle it around. So that gets glued on just there. So that's perfectly good. Then I want to do the same thing with the next one. So just apply a small amount of glue. If it's too fiddly to hold, using a small bit of blue tack or self-adhesive putty uh, just allows you to sort of hold it a little bit better. Um, obviously it likes to stick to the putty though, so you might need to use your knife or a toothpick just to get that pressure off of it. And we can just move it up in place, add it in like so. So it won't take too long for those to set. Then we can just repeat it for the middle one. So with that one in place, you can see that it actually lines up really nicely with the belt buckle. If you did want it to be more recessed from the belt buckle, you'd have to take off more of that groin armor so it can sit further back. But having it perfectly flush it looks really good. So the next two are gonna be slightly trickier, normally because there's one bent leg going forwards, makes this section a little bit tricky to add in. So for this next one, I'm gonna show you a slightly different method. I've got a little heat gun here that I'm gonna use just to apply some heat to bend the resin, which is the method we'll be using at a later date. If you don't have a heat gun, which is like a hobby tool, you can use a hairdryer or you can use some hot water. Just make sure you don't use a boiling water because that's gonna to be too hot and potentially damage the resin or later on damage your plastic model. And we're just gonna heat up the resin for a few seconds until we can bend it. So there we go, I've just bent it and already that has cooled down enough where the shape is now fixed. So you can see the shape of this one has now been bent. So then I can go in and just sort of add that piece much easily, kind of trying to conform through that leg. Now sometimes if you want the strip to be going much more sort of downwards towards the rest of the leg, it's actually easier rather than to fix it on straight to just cut off a little bit of this corner just to give it a downward shape. So I'll demonstrate that here. Again, you don't need to do this all the time, but I'd much rather show you some of the more complicated techniques you can apply just so you've got them at your disposal. So again, you can see here that I've just cut this one at an angle. That will allow me to add it in 
just there. Same as before, just to add a bit of glue onto that very top section. Just initially plant it in. So with that one glued in place, you can start to see how it looks. Now, obviously don't worry about the fact that this is sticking madly upright. I'll sort that out at the very end when we heat up all the resin and we can start to bend these strips into poses that we like. And then the last one I've got to add on just here. Again, this thing is in the way, which makes it a lot trickier. And I think you only really get that problem with these easy build kits. If you're using the full intercessor kit, you want to add these at the very end afterwards. So this shouldn't really be a problem for a lot of the models. But as I said before, rather than just show you a super easy method when you might come across some more complicated things, I'd rather show you the most complicated version there is because everything else would be much easier than this one. So again, with my bit of blue tack, I can just sort of start to line this up to see how I want it to look. Realistically, I think I just need to cut a little notch out of this to line it up against this little pouch. So the little resin strips can be quite delicate. So just be careful because if you cut them too much, you know, they can be a bit brittle and they can snap. So it's best to just trim this down lightly in small segments rather than try and take out one big piece at a time. So I've now trimmed down that strip very carefully and I've just again attached it to some self-adhesive putty just so it's a bit easier to handle which will allow me to just do a test fit and you can see that it will fit in relatively well against that pouch. Now it doesn't need to be 100% accurate because I can just fill in any gaps with some green stuff at the very end. We can now just apply some glue to those edges and not just at the top this time but going along around that little gap where it's going to meet the pouch and then I can just glue it in place. Now that's all in we just want to give that about a minute for the glue to fully set before we move on to the next step. So with the Taruja's strips now all glued in place we can now just heat these up. Now the heat will bend the resin like it did before up here and we can just bend it however we want. So you can use a knife, you can use a toothpick, you can even use some pliers to kind of grab it to help you manipulate it sort of forwards and backwards. One thing to be very careful is if you're using a hairdryer or a heat gun, is that too much heat will damage your plastic and it will start to melt. So you need to be very careful just to apply a nice even amount of heat around the model, but not too much in one place that it will just heat up too much. An alternative is you could then dunk this model in some hot water. Again, not boiling water because that would be too hot, just for under a minute, and that will be enough to make these start to go soft and you can bend them to your heart's content. As I mentioned earlier, anywhere where there's glue, it won't bend, so the top bits shouldn't really be bending at all because that's where we attached it to the model. But also one other trick that we can do is that once these are set in a position that we're happy with, we can just lightly apply some glue to the very back, which will set it in place. So you could try and concentrate on bending and heating one at a time and then fixing it in place with some super glue at the very back of the strip, or we can try and just do them all in one go. So I'm just going to apply the heat for a few seconds until the strips all start to bend. In fact, this bent one will start to go straight so you know the resin is hot enough to start bending. So I'm moving it back and forth to try and make sure that the heat isn't just on one particular place. So you can see that they're starting to go soft and you can bend them around a little bit. So you can see it's gone nice and soft now. And I just need to kind of keep repeating that process, slowly heating them up and then rebending them until I'm happy with the final positions. So sometimes you only get maybe 10 seconds before they go hard again, so you just need to reapply the heat with the hairdryer and then just carry on the process again. Ah. 
So now I'm sort of happy with how this one's positioned. What I can do is just apply a little bit of glue to the very back to help fix it in place. So with your glue and toothpick, you just want to just carefully apply it to the underside of your model. That's the bit that's not going to be visible. So that should stop that part from now bending once it heats up, which will allow me to kind of concentrate on manipulating the shape of some of these others. Once I'm happy with a couple of these, so say maybe these ones, I'll apply some glue to the very back and then I can worry about this one at the very end. Apply a little bit of glue, which should be nice and smooth. You won't really see any of that once it's painted up because it will dry relatively flat on the model. And again, it's going to be in a place where you won't really see it anyway. So just let that set for a few seconds. And then we should be able to concentrate on heating up this last one, just to bend that one a little bit more without worrying about these. So you can see this one's gone nice and soft now. So I'm just going to bring it over and up. It gives you a good sense that he's sort of moving around and then even though you don't necessarily need to I'm just going to fix this one down in place as well just by applying some glue to that underside so that one is all finished I'm just going to apply a very small amount of green stuff just here to help seal that gap in just where that pouch is but otherwise I don't think it needs any more green stuff anywhere else. If you do need to though, you can always add just a tiny bit of green stuff down into these gaps, just to help blend it better with the belt. But for the most part, it's very rarely needed. Likewise, if you did have any air bubbles or maybe you've torn the resin ever so slightly from over bending it, then some green stuff will fix that as well. So I'm only using a very tiny bit of green stuff and even this is probably far too much. I just want to just manipulate it into any gaps and I can remove the excess. So that was a normal sculpting tool and then this is just a silicone tipped tool which will just allow me to press it smooth into those recesses. And then that is the truges added in place. The last thing to do on this guy is to add in the arm. So you could either have him in a kind of up smashing pose where you can see the a bit better or potentially have it down like this. I'll stick it up for now just so you can see the a bit better. You can see that there's a nice like dynamic sense of movement that you get with it. Obviously striding forwards. The leather strips are kind of moving all over the place which is sort of what you'd expect kind of going up and around that knee. And once that green stuff is set, this model will be all ready for painting. So it's relatively straightforward to create this kit and you should easily be able to style up any, not only just Marines, but Guardsmen or whatever system that you want to play this with. Like I said before, I tried to demonstrate the most complicated version of it where you've got a knee that's going really high forwards that you need to kind of worry about. And then on the other side, we've got a pouch detail, which is set in place, which I don't want to remove. So those are two extra steps. A lot of the kits don't have those issues on them. So they're a lot more straightforward than this one. But I did want to demonstrate something that would have all of those issues in just so you could see how to work around them. If I bring this one back, this is a prime example of one that's much more straightforward where there's no issue with the bending leg or any pouch detail in the way because on the full intercessor kit you can add all of that detail later on. Please do check out my shop at beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop if you'd like to pick some of these up. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop me a message in the comments or you can message me directly on my website. If you watch regularly and enjoy these videos, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Any support is greatly appreciated and it allows me to spend more time making these videos as they're quite time consuming to put together. If you'd like to support me, the link is in the description below. All my content is free and not behind a paywall, but I've included a few benefits just for my Patreons. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current Patreons. I really appreciate all of your support.
You can also check out my online store where I sell resin conversion kits over at beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop and my Patreon supporters get a special discount on there too. Lastly, I just want to say thanks again for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it and made it this far, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you want to keep notified about future videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and over on the Lookout Sir 40k podcast. That's all for now. Until the next time, take care.